Folks, the very last call time booster box opening on Alpha Investments. For my patron, Jared K. That's it, folks. We've had a good run. We've enjoyed the product. We did some collector boxes at the beginning. Did we do collector boxes at the beginning? I think we did collector boxes at the beginning. Can't remember. And uh, that's it, folks. This is where we're at. This is it. So, hope you all enjoy the journey as we retire another product into the history of the YouTube endless algorithm of the internet that will be there forever, once and for all. And uh, as we have our last conversation, you know, I always get sentimental on the very last versions and the very last box openings of each product. You know, it, it's always a little sentimental. It's always a nice little, it's always a nice little in conclusion moment. You guys know that with me. It's very sentimental. You know, we go through a lot together. Hey, our first god, the old god of winter there. What's the, the old legendary snow creature with, of course, the staff artifact. You know, I, I, more and more as the years go by, I feel like the weaker the product is during release, and the, god, that artwork is so nice, and the, ah, Retribution, it's one of these things where the weaker it is, and the less people talk about it, the more it ages long term. I see that all the time. All the time. Looking at you, Ixalons, and Hour of Devastating Your Wallets, and looking at you, you know, flipping, <laughs> I would say I'm on Kitty Cat, but I guess I'm on Kitty Cat is better than Hour of Devastation, you know, I mean, has anybody actually seen Dragon's Maze lately? It's kind of impressive. Ooh, Haunting Voyage. I remember we got this in the other box opening video the other day. Uh, borderless Showcase Extended Art. I don't know what you want to call it. Kind of strange irony that we got that exact kind of card in both box openings. That's a little suspect, a little suspicious. I always think that's weird. I feel like sometimes certain cards are easier to get than others. Glorious Protector. But then again, as we know, you look hard enough in anything in this world... You can create a pattern out of anything if you look hard enough. Oh, we got some sort of full art back there. I just saw something spicy coming. And search for glory. And, uh, ooh, nice looking foil uncommon. Oh, God, really? I just got trolled by wizards. I thought that edge work was another full art. I totally just got flipping trolled, everybody. Anyways, yeah, call time. I think as of, actually, you know what? As of the filming of this video, holy cow, are we getting like every saga in the set? Like, four of our rares are sagas right now. That's kind of flipping crazy. I just want to say, as of right now, Call Time Collector Boxes, I believe, are... Wow, really? Another saga? Holy smokes. And Foil Common. I think Call Time Collector Boxes are the cheapest collector box on the market, right? Aren't they, isn't it the cheapest, quote-unquote, the worst collector box on the market? And there you go. God of the Voyage. Very nice, I don't know, showcase, fancy, alternate frame. I don't even know what you call it. All I know is, you know, the expected value and the way the value is split up through the cards in the set is actually pretty good, man. Like I said, you got a lot of rares worth money. You got a lot of mythics worth money. It's, it's you know, it's nice. Ah, another god favored. There we go. As long as you get, ooh, a foil rare coming through. God of Worthy. Beautiful looking card. Looks fantastic. Beautiful looking shield on the back there. So our first foil rare is a god rare. That's always, uh, that's always a good one versus getting some bulk 50 cent rare. You know what I mean? It's always a positive thing. All right, going into the old Faceless Haven for the fancy rare land cycle. What do we got? Uh, just a foil common little spirit knight. Yeah, no other mythics. Um, yeah, have you guys seen the price? Flipping monstrous, flipping mythic Verona, Veronica's monstrous rider. You see, wow, another saga. That thing's like $35 mythic in this product. I was like, yowzers, that thing is real. I thought the thing was like twenty twenty five and... Holy smokes of the prices and that thing jumped up. Hey, Battle Mammoth. I'm probably one of the only people that likes this card, but that's cool. I'm an elephant fan. And again, everybody always likes to target your crap. There you go. At least you start drawing cards every time people target your crap, man. So, very cool. I don't know if that one's worth... I don't think one's worth a whole lot, but I like the card. I like the card. Hey, God of Storytelling. This is another one that's been getting a lot of shenanigans lately and some old actual play. And yeah, if you haven't seen, that is one of the more expensive rares in the set right now. The old Mrs. B, the storyteller, she's been she's been a little firecracker lately, man. She's been she's been an animal. She's been doing well. Harold, you got late. I think we are trying. I think Jared, are you trying to get every single saga in the product? Because it feels like we're trying to get every saga in the set. <laughs> kind of silly. In search of greatness. A lot of people like it. I'm not really a big fan of that rare. You know, I, I don't know. I know people built some little green shenanigan decks with it, but 
I don't know. That card doesn't do nothing for me. And Righteous Valkyrie. Wasn't that a foil rare? Uh, no. I'm thinking of a different one. Sorry. And, oh, second foil rare. Of course, I guess, why not be a Saga? We've gotten every single Saga in this product. So, Battle Frost. Or, I'm sorry. Battle of Frost in Fire. I, I really do like Sagas. I really think adding Sagas to a different card type, enjoying it, has really been, hey, God of the Worthy. There you go. That was our foil rare. Never mind. I got the wrong, uh, God-looking angel confused there. Yep, that was our foil rare. I think Saga's really, it was, a, was a really good engineering for Wizards. I, I really like it. I like how each turn you kind of go through the story of the Saga and it kind of tends to, usually like the last one on turn three, usually if it's a three turn Saga. Some I've seen, I think I have four, I think some have two. Um, I, I like it. I don't know. It's got a good vibe to it. Elvish Warmaster, Warmaster, and a foily uncommon. Um, yeah, can we please have some more Mythics? That would be nice right now. We are past the halfway mark in this video. Um, can we please have additional Mythics? Okay, all I had to do was ask, is that right? Well, not the most expensive Mythic, but the old Starheim Unleashed. You know, for the Angel people, everyone in their fancy little Angel decks. People love their life gain Angel decks on Arena. Oh my goodness, do they love those shenanigans. I know, right, the only thing better than that is what, the world-famous Hallowed Priest little life gain counter combo, endless blah blah blah. Foil, snow-covered mountain. See, this excites me more than a lot of things, you know? I always, I always thought snow-covered lands are, are a special thing. I think in my head I view them as more, I don't know, special and unique than they really are, but that's just me. Runefold Champion. All right, last 12 packs of this box, then we'll have a little couple-minute yip-yap conversation about my opinion on the end of our nice little Kaldheim adventure here. Ooh, God of Lies. Excellent. Okay. One of the most expensive mythics in the product. Absolutely God of Lies. And, of course, everyone's favorite Planeswalker, Dr. T. Um, there you go. Holy crap. Okay. I'm pretty sure that may be the second or third most expensive card in the product. That thing's been... thing's kind of a monster, man. Fate... Really? Faceless Haven? That's a blah. That's a flippin' blah. Uh, watch it become some big hot card and everyone's making fun of me by the time you watch this video. Not a fan. Not a fan. And t bowls Trickery. All right. Let's get these last few packs over here. See how we wrap things up here, everybody. You know, I, I guess I've been doing this so long, so when I see markets... So God, Raven's Warning, another flipping one. Hey, the Veil, probably one of my favorite green common cards. Nothing better than people targeting and lightning bolting and exiling your card, and, you know, and it gives it a flipping counter, and you dodge your card being targeted. Always my fave. Search for Glory. Uh, oh, and, oh, I thought we had... Ooh, look at that. That's gorgeous. Uh, but no, I, I feel like, you know, at this point, been doing this so long, I've learned that, you know, products that the market doesn't seem to focus much on tend to be the better performing products. And finally, a flipping pathway. These pathways are still like five, seven dollars a card, but we are just not pulling them. I remember I was complaining about that in the other call time box opening video. I was like, we didn't get any. We got like one pathway in a whole flipping box, man. And of course, I guess we're too busy getting flipping sagas, man. That's all we want is a bunch of sagas, right? We don't care about pathways because those have value and actually have utility. But no, let's just get an army of sagas. And look at that, the old realm eater. Dude, that is an awesome looking card, man. That is a really cool looking card. Anyways, anyways, I'm just rambling. Beautiful day in the world. Just enjoying some magic cracking here. Talking to everybody about what's going on. Oh, Cosmos Serpent in a foil common. This is one that's really... This thing's been going up in price. I remember this was a couple bucks. I think this is like $10, $15 now. Absolutely ridiculously powerful card. Um, and that puts us at a five mythic box opening again. Yeah, that Serpent's ridiculous, man. Anybody ever actually played against that thing? The card will drive you crazy. Hey, Pathway number two, finally. Yep. Uh, oh, I saw the fancy. Uh, no, just a foil common. Just a foil common, folks. Yeah, I feel like Call Time is going to be one of these products that's going to age like Theros, where it starts off bad, this and that, then all of a sudden, towards the end of its life cycle. Oh my goodness, what is this? Holy smokes, look at that Nico! Borderless, showcase, full art, lack of frame, whatever word choice you want to use. Wow! Okay. Well, in the close, we ended up so, wow, we actually got a foil, fancy schmancy plane walk, planeswalker, and we actually had a, a full art, or I'm sorry, borderless, or whatever you want to call it, at the beginning of the video also. Ending on the heroes. That was pretty spicy. Not bad, Jared. You know, I know, we didn't get the flipping monstrous rider, but you know what? Got a lot of other good stuff here, man. We got the guys of lies, we got the serpent. 
Um, you know, Rudy's favorite, the old mammoth for targeting and card draw. <sighs> but yeah, I, I think this is going to be one of those products. It's just going to be everyone's focus is just on like, you know, Modern Horizons 2, Strix Haven Zoo, Dungeons and Dragons, rah, rah, rah. You know, of course, Secret Layers, rah, rah, rah. And I feel like Call Time is just like, hello, what about me? I'm a decent product. I was a good selling product. That's what it feels like to me. And I feel like everyone's just kind of letting it be. People aren't really, I don't know, taking it seriously or... I don't know, I feel like people aren't buying into it much for whatever the reason is. Even, even like, I know, I'm like, literally the views are, like, 99% of the viewers are gone at this point. But, I like, I even on my own Patreon account, the amount of orders coming through from patrons buying Kaldheim just regular draft boxes is so low. It's incredibly low. It's probably the lowest I've seen... <sighs> Probably since Theros, maybe. Maybe Theros, while it was in print, nobody was buying it. At the end, everybody wanted Theros because it was getting cut off. The prices went through the roof. People realized, holy crap. Everybody bashed it for no reason, including myself. And people were just fighting over Theros at the end. I feel like Call Time's going to do the same thing. Because no one's buying it. Nobody has it. The amount of sales right now since release of Call Time is like flatlined. So, I don't know. Maybe somebody will remember this conversation in about a year from now when Call Time's out of print. We'll see what happens. Other than that... Hope you all enjoyed the call time box openings and everything. As we say goodbye to another magic product. As the, you know, the wheel in the sky keeps on turning, you know.